We've got about an hour. Uh, the goal is if we can get everything rough cut and then all the colors and lighting matched by the end of today, we're in pretty good shape. And then the bonus would be if we could start to refine some of the edges as well. So I did a rough cut on these barrels in the foreground, very rough cut. And the way I did that was I simply lassoed around them. I'll go backwards here. And then I did what's called, well, if you just lasso around something and you delete, it deletes the thing you actually lassoed around. But if you go to select and then invert selection, so inverse, it will select everything outside of what you selected. And so you can cut it out that way. And we'll learn some other ways to do that. But I'm just going to keep it there for now. And then next, we have the tree coral in front of this. And we're going to rough cut this out. And I'm just going to use the magic wand to start because those blues are nice and open. So a big thing using the magic wand, oh, let me, uh, let me lock the close barrel so that doesn't happen again. Get on the right layer. I can hold down shift and add to my selection with the magic wand. If I select something I didn't want to select like that, I can hold down option and that will subtract the selection. Of course, now it's a lot more work, but I can also change selection tools. So I can go from the magic wand to the lasso, hold down option and subtract, or hold down shift and add. And you'll see next to the lasso, there's a little plus sign or subtraction sign when you hold down option or shift. But I'm just doing a rough cut. I don't need to get it perfectly smooth. You see all this little debris that's left. And I'm gonna keep using the magic wand. I started learning Photoshop back in 1996, and it was Photoshop 4, actually 95. And um, one of my first teachers, I didn't have that many Photoshop classes, but they basically said, at least at that point, Photoshop is all about learning how to select things. <laughs> the better you can select things, the better your art can be. And there's a lot of truth to that. And there's no real equivalent of selecting things in analog art. I guess the closest thing would be stenciling or masking a certain type of art, a certain type of painting. So learn these tools using shift to add, moving between the magic wand and the lasso. There's also the quick selection tool, which is with the magic wand. It tries to just make a lot of smart decisions for you. And it's gotten better with the different versions of Photoshop, but I still just generally don't trust it. But you are free to, to try out different selections. And then there are some other options you have. Right now, I have been doing all my selections with zero pixel feathering at the top, which means that it cuts the entire pixel out without any kind of gradation or variation. So you see that? You see a nice little stair step of all those pixels, super clean. Now watch this. If I just select the rim here, and then I give it a feathering option of let's say three pixels, and then I delete. I think I actually have to set that and then use the selection. So now I am lassoing, but the lasso is not just gonna cut through one pixel it's gonna feather that thing I drew across three pixels. And then I hit delete and look what happens. So you get that softer edge. So that's a good way to cut out things that are soft, soft edge, right? But rough cutting is all sharp because you can always take away focus. You can always soften, but in computers you can't sharpen without loss of quality. Okay, so this is where I wanted to get, where I have my five layers all rough cut. Because this shows me my first goal, which is to fill up my sketch. And I have a problem. Do you see where it is? Everything's filled up except right here. So that's where I go to what's called internal compositing. 
and I'm going to go back to that big coral, this stuff that I'm not using at all. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to take my lasso. I'm going to grab a bunch of this that I'm not using. In fact, I might grab this whole side. And then I am going to duplicate it, just that selection. I'm going to hit Command J, duplicate that onto a new layer so that I can then move it over here. to fill up some of that space behind. And then I'm going to transform it. I'll squat it down a little bit. I'll warp it up a little bit. I don't want, I want everything to be covered so that I can transition. So maybe like that. And then there's just this pesky little bit right there. So what else can I do? Well, I can take this stuff outside of my frame on this layer, unlock it, lasso it, just a bunch of this kind of texture, duplicate it with Command-J, move that down and behind just to fill in that little spot. So having stuff overlap is really important. And I might decide, yeah, this is looking pretty good. I've got the barrels, I've got foreground coral, I've got middle ground, I've got background, I've got foreground. The colors aren't working yet. It feels all a little too busy, but I've got everything I need and I'm filling the space. Nothing wrong with that. It's all good. But you might decide, you know what? The composition feels all really cramped. I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just going to move this guide up a little bit. And I think this would look better if it was a little bit taller. And then I can make a duplicate of that background layer, that open water, and I could try stretching it. Remember, you have those transform tools. And yeah, I think I like that better. And then I might think I like that so much that I go to the Cement City and I duplicate that, Command J, and I transform that to be a little bit bigger and taller. Give it a little bit more space. So once you've rough cut things, you can really place them better. And then the big coral, I'm not even going to duplicate it, I'm just going to move it a little bit. Kind of shift it up to the side. Maybe transform it again. This is all to really show that we have control of where things are placed. Just like we would in a collage. We don't have to glue them down digitally. We can always move them and alter them a little bit. And I like that I can see the nuclear symbol on the barrel just really slightly. So I'm going to hit Command S to save. And now that I'm pretty secure that this is my composition, I don't need all this empty space anymore. So I'm going to use the crop tool and I'm not going to crop exactly to it. So if I, I went right to my guides, it would look like this. All right, and then that's my composition. But instead, I'm going to crop just outside of it. So here are my guides. So I'm just going to go right outside of my guides. So I just make a little frame so that I can still see the little uh, extra aspects that are outside. And you might decide to crop it differently. You might decide to crop it in even more for your composition. That's why we did at least 11 by 14 because the only requirement on the assignment sheet is that it prints at 8 by 10 at 300 pixels per inch. So you might find your really good composition that uses five elements is right here. And that's what, that's what you actually want, even if your sketch was something else. Okay, so now that's gonna save a lot of memory, cropping that out. 
And then the next step is treating the colors. Now this is magic, right? But it doesn't work until you've done at least a rough cutout of everything. So I'm gonna start with the back. And all these layers I'm not using, these duplicates, I'm gonna to move to the top. And all these layers I am using that make up the image, just so I'm aware of them. I'm gonna make sure they're all unlocked. I'm gonna select them all by holding down Shift. And then I'm going to click on the space around the eye. Oops. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna pick a color. I'm gonna make them all green. So that means that the, the layers I'm using for this composite, not my sketch, not my background, are these green layers. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. I actually have five sources, but remember I duplicated from two of those sources and gave myself an extra layer. Okay, now I'm gonna go from the background. I might as well turn that gray back on because it helps to see color. Come on. I'm gonna start with the background and I'm just gonna play with the color. So these are new options. So far we've only transformed We've only distorted, warped, rotated, and scaled. Now I'm going to go to what are called direct image adjustments. So you go up to image at the top, you go to adjustments, and the first one I'm going to do is levels. I'm going to teach you two, two settings. All of these first four have to do with lightness and darkness, what's called value. My favorite tool is levels. Levels gives you three sliders, a highlight slider, a mid-tone slider, and a shadow slider. What I want you to do is just play with the mid-tone slider. You can push it to the left, you can push it to the right, and just see what kind of atmosphere you want to build. Like maybe I want this to be a little bit darker. Right? If you push it too far, you, you start losing image information. You don't want to ever push to black, and you never want to push to white. But I'm going to start by just making it a little bit darker. Okay, the next tool is color. So that's lighting. And for that, it's all of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different options to play with color. We're going to use two of them. My favorite one, the one I use most, is color balance. So levels and color balance. These are the tools I want you to, to hear about in this video, to try on your own work, and make all the difference. Color balance is just the temperature of the color. So this is underwater, but that doesn't mean it has to be like super cyan. I can make this a little bit more red, right? A little bit pinker, a little bit greener. I'm kind of liking the pinks. Maybe put a little bit more yellow in there, or maybe a little bit more I don't know. This is the deep background, so maybe I'll go a little bit more towards the purples. Okay, so that's color balance. It's beautiful. It shifts the temperature of everything. The next color one I'll use sometimes is hue saturation. Now this is for big changes. Really changing it, right? So where I mostly use it is I'll just shift the hue a little bit to the left or the right. So let's make it a little bit deeper. And then I'll play with the saturation. Do I want to take the color down a little because it's in the background? Or do I want to intensify it? And again, you don't want to go to the, the extremes. But I, I might take the color just down just a tiny bit because it's a background plate. Okay, now I move up to the next layer. And it's this, and because that's kind of a background plate that was stolen from here. I'm just going to go to adjustments, push the levels, make it a lot darker. That's all. And then I might just do a shortcut and say auto tone. And you see how the auto tone will bring out the contrast and the color in it. But it doesn't give me control of the settings, it just kind of maximizes them. Next layer, this, you see how it looks so green now next to this? And I like that a little bit. It pushes it more into the foreground. But, so notice the difference between that, which is what I had before, and this. So that color really helps push that background back. 
cooler color.